we want to allow you to get a contractor, electrical contractor that's licensed with the Grand Mama Board Authority, who is aware of all the procedures. Uh, so for instance, you would need to then come to the Building and Development Services Department, fill in an application, provide us with site plan, provide us with location of the generator, provide us with certain specifications that we, the inspectors, would then look over. And then upon approval, your contractor would be able to then carry out the procedures of installing the, the generator. You also want to make sure that you use the right materials. Hence, that's what, where the Canadian Electrical Code is enforced. And that's where we as inspectors come out and we inspect to make sure that the right materials are used, everything that you show us on the drawings are there, and so forth. But first of all, you must hire a professional who is trained, fully trained in, in maintaining the generator and, and generator procedures. You must also set your generator to start at least once a week so that you will know in the event of a power outage, you don't want to be shuffling around and wondering why your generator isn't run, operating. So it's, it's good to set your generator to start once a week. Uh, that way you will know for sure that you're safe. So maintaining a generator, uh, it, we want to do it once a year or every thousand hours, but it's whatever one comes first. So if you don't use, as people say, we don't use a thousand hours a generator, still at least once a year you want to service your generator. One, what you don't want to do is fuel your generators as it is operating, because this could be very dangerous and could cause uh, harm to you or those around you. Two, you want to make sure that your generator is properly ventilated, not too close to your home, because there are fumes that comes from the generator that could be deadly. Three, what you also want to do is, a lot of us like portable generators. Uh, it is not recommended that we have portable generators to our electrical system, because in the event of a power outage, yes, one might say, oh, we'll turn the main brake off, but then, but if you forget to turn the main brake off, and then your portable generator is connected to your electrical system. So then now it back feeds into the power lines. And you might have somebody that's working on the power line that could actually cause them harm, cause them death. That's how serious it could be. So it's recommended that you don't do that. If you have a portable generator, plug it in, plug a drop cord into it and use it directly like that.